Hi, I'm Jill, Chief Safety Officer with Vivid Learning Systems. I'm a former OSHA inspector and I'm here to help you identify and correct workplace hazards. For this series, we are at the beautiful Monterey Bay Aquarium to show you that no matter where you work, safety is for everyone. Not long ago, I was talking with an electrician and I asked him if he had ever experienced an arc flash. Now an arc flash is an electrical explosion that can happen in an electrical device where the metal inside of the cabinet vaporizes and blasts out at the panel at a person. He, this particular electrician told me he had experienced an arc flash personally. He was working to install new electrical devices in a, in a building and he said he was just about at the point where he was going to um, energize the entire system and he was thinking about the fire rated clothing that he had access to and was remembering most of his FR rated gear was back at his truck and he thought well this is a new installation and it's not likely to have an arc flash occur here and he was already wearing his fire rated shirt and so decided not to make the effort to go back to his truck to get um, his, his fire rated clothing. And so when he energized the system, what he didn't know was that there was a dust in the panel from the manufacturing process and an arc flash occurred at that time. Luckily, he wasn't standing with his body directly in front of the panel. And so he didn't sustain um, the majority of the blast and wasn't injured badly. And so even when you have new installations, arc flash can still happen. So how do you know how to protect yourself? What is the right fire rated clothing to wear? Well, the only way to know that is by doing an arc flash hazard assessment. And that needs to be done by a qualified person. It's an engineering method that starts with where the power comes into your community and traces it right back to the exact device that you're going to be working with. And then you can have the proper labels applied to know what it's the particular fire rated clothing that your employees need to be wearing. Today we're at the Monterey Bay Aquarium and I'm with the safety manager from the aquarium, Jeremiah, and they have done that electrical arc flash assessment and they have applied their labels. And Jeremiah, maybe you could walk us through that, um, that process and the labeling and how you make it work here at the aquarium. First and foremost, one of the most important things is that these areas are kept clean. You don't want this to turn into an auxiliary storage area where you would have mop buckets, boxes, anything like that. Particularly in the event of emergency, you want to be able to access your panels. You also want to restrict access from unauthorized personnel. Really, these are serious work areas where only people that are qualified to do so should access. Um, so let's look at a label real quick. If you look to Jill's right here, you can see at the top there's a category. And that category is part of the rating system. And if you read the label, it will tell you what type of personal protective equipment you need for that category. Um, we have several different categories here with different examples. If I look back here, we've got a category one. It'll tell you you need a flame retardant shirt and pants. It'll also tell you you need gloves. We've got some examples of uh, some of the flame retardant equipment that you might be required to use to access some of these panels. This is an example of a face shield. Now, if you were to access one of these panels that was energized and it was required, this would protect your face, neck, uh, and head from an arc flash. Now, we also have an example of a flame retardant jacket. Now, you would wear this as well with pants. You may even be required, like on some of the other labels you see, to wear uh, uh, coveralls over this. But what I want you to notice is that it has a rating on it. This is a unit of measure. It's cal calories per square centimeters. And this protects up to 11 calories per square centimeters. If you look off to my right, you can actually see this label says up to 10 calories per square centimeter. Um, actually, if you look off to, to the right where Jill has, this one is up to 11, which this would protect. But the panel just adjacent to that one says 12 calories per, per square centimeter. So this jacket would not be sufficient to access that panel. So it's really important that you get training on this. If you're an electrician and you're gonna be accessing these areas or if you're a supervisor and you're gonna walk through an MCC room or any, any other area where you have these electrical panels that you know and you understand these rules, and especially if you're a certified electrician, you need to be able to interpret the rule so that you know that when you access that panel, you're doing it safely. Now here at the aquarium, we have several different panels 
um, rating from all different categories, uh, category zero, all the way up to, to panels that we can't open um, at any energized point. Um, in that scenario, we'd have to actually get the utility company to kill power to the transformer so that we could access uh, those panels. So that would be a best practice. That's definitely something I would recommend. And try to avoid accessing these panels when they're energized whenever you can. Jeremiah, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us today. I know that this can be really complicated. So if you're looking for help with doing that arc flash hazard assessment, let us know. We can um, connect you with some resources. I hope you gained a safety skill today. If you know someone who needs this, go ahead and pass it on. Safety is everyone's business.